uh, thank you for yep. Uh, hello, uh, thank you for uh, taking your time to join this session. Uh, today, I will talk to the, you about the, the extra boot configuration and boot time tracing. So uh, let me introduce myself at first. I'm Masami Hiramats, I work for Linaro as a tech lead for uh, Linaro members uh, landing team. In uh, the Linux kernel development, I'm responsible for the K-probes uh, boot config and its uh, related uh, tracing features and the tools. Okay, uh, so let's start today's talk. So first of all, uh, I want to make a notice, uh, actually that uh, this session is not explaining uh, F-trace itself. So if you are not familiar with uh, F-trace, uh, please check uh, Stevens session yeah so uh, why do we need a uh, kernel kind of root time tracing uh, because we sometimes need to debugging and analyzing uh, boot time errors and performance issues uh, for example the major uh, performance statistics and um, analyzing that the, uh, the driver initialization failure or debugging that the boot time, boot time uh, process and uh, uh, continuously uh, tracing from boot time. So what we can do for the source uh, request. So uh, we actually have our kernel command line options for tracing. Uh, there are the uh, options uh, for tracing uh, and F trace. So let's see what we uh, we have now. So here are the uh, command line options for the root time uh, event tracing. So TP print K, for example, uh, will uh, show that the, the traced event data on the console. Uh, this is important if the uh, the kernel boot process has a bug and cannot reach login uh, because that are, you cannot dump the uh, trace buffer in that case. So also uh, you can uh, enable uh, each event uh, via trace event option. And uh, you can add uh, k probes of events also. Uh, it's like a breakpoint uh, from the debugger. Uh, so you can add uh, new events uh, dynamically Um, uh, you also can uh, use that, uh, the function and function call graph and, and other uh, various traces like uh, IRQ off, uh, wake up, uh, or preempt off, or something like that uh, by using that uh, F trace option. Uh, note that you can uh, specify only one uh, tracer at uh, a at time. Um, and uh, optionally, uh, you can filter the trace function by its name, uh, uh, ftrace filter and uh, uh, ftrace no trace uh, for the uh, function tracer, and uh, ftrace graph filter and ftrace graph no trace uh, for uh, function call graph tracer. Um, you can uh, specify that uh, uh, which function uh, you want to trace or not trace by its name. There are also uh, some other options. For example, uh, trace options will set the uh, options for F trace. So, uh, so you can pass that some uh, options to that. Uh, for example, the stack trace option, if you uh, pass, uh, that will uh, add a uh, stack trace for each event. Uh, and there, uh, there are some other options too. Um, yeah. So, uh, to, to check that uh, those are options, you can see that uh, the documentation admin guide, uh, the kernel parameters text. So uh, here is an example of the boot time tracing uh, via the, uh, the, the, the kernel command line. 
in that graph configuration, uh, you can write the uh, options like below. Um, yeah, um, it's nice to, uh, it's not nice to read, but it works. So with these uh, options, um, if you boot up the kernel, you will see that uh, this, uh, let's say, example output, uh, let's say, th this kind of the output. That's, this one needs a part of the uh, boot log and uh, of the kernel. And yeah, it shows that uh, some are uh, init call start and init call finish events, uh, page forwards are logged on the console. Uh, however, there are some problems uh, of the kernel pro command lines. Um, uh, we have a size and the coding limitations. Actually, that are the most of the each uh, architecture supports uh, four kilobyte uh, command line or uh, more, but that uh, must be a single line option. So, uh, four kilobyte single line uh, that uh, will be hard to read and also write. Yeah, of course, that there are some. Uh, bootloader uh, wrapper can allow us to write uh, uh, it in uh, several lines, but uh, it's still uh, hard to read or write. And also, we can not use the par event filters and actions, instances, and histograms uh, with uh, the legacy uh, kernel command line. So what uh, solution we have here? Uh, the first solution is uh, uh, we can use that uh, init long FS, uh, for example, embed the summer script, shell script inside the, the init long FS, but it's too late for the kernel boot time tracing. Then uh, expanding the kernel command line. Uh, no, it's not e so easy to write down the uh, complex tracing options. So finally, uh, I decided to introduce a new boot time data, uh, which is the extra boot configuration. So uh, what is the extra boot configuration? Uh, it's a new kernel uh, command line extension. Uh, I call it as a, a boot config for short. This boot config is a plain ASCII text of a uh, tree structured key value list. So that are something like a, a syscontrol.conf file, but more structured. So you can see that there's an example. So uh, there uh, Boot config will uh, actually that are loaded with the uh, initial the image when boot, and uh, there is an uh, in kernel APIs for flexible option parsing. So uh, ex uh, here is the uh, extra boot configuration uh, syntax. Uh, it's conf uh, it actually consists of the uh, simple key value set. Uh, you can set that uh, values uh, or, uh, sorry, uh, you can set the value or array of the values as a uh, comma separated list. And you can match our same keywords uh, with brace like this. So that if you have a, a key dot word one equal value one and key dot word two equal value two. Uh, this can be written as a, a key brace uh, word one and uh, word one equal value one and word two equal value two and close brace. <clears throat> and uh, uh, here, the, uh, here are the uh, value assignment operators. We have three assignment operators. The equal. Uh, define that uh, value uh, of the key and the column equal uh, overwrite the previous assignment. Yeah, if you uh, write that uh, the equal, uh, what's it, the assignment, 
uh, two assignment uh, continuously um, on the same keys, it will be a, uh, let's say, an error. So that uh, you need to use that uh, colon equal. And uh, uh, there is a, uh, <coughs> uh, let's say, the plus equal um, assignment. It actually adds a uh, value to the existing key as an array element. So that uh, if you uh, have a key equal foo and a key plus equal bar, in that case, uh, this is the same as the key equal foo comma bar. And uh, here is the, the latest update of the root config syntax. We can mix the keys and the values on the same key. So our uh, parent key can have a value and subkeys. Uh, note that you can not match uh, the values and the subkeys by brace uh, because it cannot identify a value or a subkey. Yeah, because that our value will be uh, uh, yeah in the the uh, what's it there? In this case, we uh, the value can be a, bar, uh, a sub key, not a value. Oh, uh, this is an important syntax. Uh, the comment. This is a comment. So you can add a comment in the root config. So if you put the comment, you can remember why uh, that is said. Yeah. So uh, that's our, uh, all of the, the syntax of the root config. So uh, here is uh, yeah, uh, how the root config uh, expands the kernel command line. Um, if the key, uh, so that are in the uh, root config file, if the key start uh, from the kernel keyword, uh, those are passed to the, the kernel command line. So uh, for example, uh, kernel dot root equal uh, UUID equal uh, blah, 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 it will be, uh, uh, will set that the, the root uh, option for the kernel command line. And also uh, if you uh, set that the, the keys start with the, the init uh, uh, passed to the, the kernel command line, but after a double dash, so this means that uh, these are uh, the uh, options are passed to the init process, like a system D. So uh, how we can uh, pass the uh, boot config to the kernel? Uh, as I said before, uh, as I said before, um, boot config file will be loaded with init LD. So there is a tools boot config, uh, boot config. Uh, yeah, actually that are in a kernel source code. Um, the, it's a, a the command uh, to handle, uh, uh, we'll say handle it. So that are, uh, for example, uh, hyphen A option will uh, append your boot config file to the int of the image. And the hyphen D option uh, will uh, delete it. So uh, these are figures, uh, how the uh, root config file is uh, appended to the init LD. Uh, they're uh, appended to the, yeah, uh, I'll say uh, the root config file is appended uh, to the init LD with a footer. The kernel will check that the footer to decode it. Uh, however, uh, note that you uh, need to set the uh, root config kernel command line option to enable it. Uh, or uh, if you uh, omit the, the, this uh, root config option uh, on the kernel command line, um, it is ignored when, even if there, there is a root config in the tail of the uh, Intel D. So um, actually that's all about the boot config. Would you have any uh, questions with the uh, content so far? Oh, uh, okay, Arison, did you have uh, the questions? 
uh, there, uh, does uh, boot config works with uh, flatted image tree image? Uh, uh, so that's a, if uh, you mean that the uh, what's say uh, device tree. So uh, yes, uh, so that are um, if you, uh, if you have a uh, init of the image, uh, it works. Um, yeah, even with or without. Other uh, uh, device tree. So, um, okay, uh, what the kernel version, the root config, uh, sorry, uh, the available uh, is the next uh, question. Uh, actually, that are, I think, uh, kernel. Uh, 5.9 uh, from the 5.9 or 5. Point, I think the 5.9 will support that are the initial uh, boot config. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then uh, we'll move on to the uh, the, the next slide. So. Uh, the, how we can uh, expand that uh, boot time tracing with uh, with this uh, boot, boot config? Uh, the boot time tracing has uh, two types of the configuration in, in uh, uh, boot config. So one is yeah, actually that are uh, one is uh, the kernel command line, and one is the uh, boot time tracing in F trace, and um, the the boot time tracing uh, in F trace will be uh, uh, we have our uh, the dedicated top level key. It's our F trace in the boot config, and uh, another uh, keys uh, start from the kernel, uh, which is uh, will use that the existing uh, the kernel command line option uh, for tracing. So. Uh, to support that the, the par event, uh, par event and par instance settings, uh, we will use that the F trace um, keys, and also the K probes, uh, synth uh, synthetic events, actions, histograms uh, available uh, available with uh, the boot config. So let me show you that the, uh, how it works. So here is the uh, example uh, which I showed you before. Uh, if you use if you use that uh, boot config, uh, these options will be uh, written uh, like this. So compared with the, the uh, command line version, uh, you can easily understand what is said and why. So. So for example, uh, you can see that the uh, find that the, the buffer size is set to the one gigabyte, uh, one megabyte, and uh, also uh, there is a two uh, K probes events uh, defined, and also uh, init call and the exceptions are uh, traced, or something like that. Okay, so uh, let's see more uh, examples. So here is an example of the par instance settings. Uh, you can see that there are, uh, there are three different, uh, different uh, tracers are set at the same time in their different instances. Um, so the function uh, call graph uh, is in the uh, default uh, one, default instance. And the uh, IRQs off tracer is set in the uh, IRQs off instance and uh, wake up tracer is set in the wake up instance and uh, uh, each tracer has a different uh, buffer size so uh, here is the uh, result so you can see that the uh, instance are automatically created yeah for example the uh, ir codes off and the uh, wake up in instances are created and uh, um, the each instance set that a different uh, different current tracer. Yeah, you can see that uh, the 
uh, the default current trace are set to the uh, function graph. And uh, uh, the IRQs off has the IRQs off, and wake up instance has a wake up. And also, um, the buffer size is set in a different way, uh, size. Um, and if you uh, cut the, the trace file uh, in each instance, uh, you can see that the, the result of the tracer. Uh, for example, uh, IRQs of instance, you, if you uh, cut it, you can see that uh, the, uh, the trace uh, the shows, a tracer shows that uh, the late maximum latency of the interrupt of period. Like this, uh, this shows that uh, three milliseconds, yeah, about the uh, almost four millisecond, uh, someone uh, stopped the, the interrupt off. Anyway, uh, the, uh, here is the, uh, another example. Uh, this tracer uh, traces all function uh, call graph in a specific function. Yeah. Uh, as I said, that the, the function call graph tracer is the, the powerful tracer. Uh, we can see that the uh, precise information uh, to filter the result, we had a, a function name filter. But uh, that is sometimes doesn't work because we don't know uh, what function is uh, called inside that function. <laughs> so uh, combined with the, the per event actions, we can limit uh, the function call graph uh, between one event and another. Uh, this example uses the, the k probes event to put that uh, a pair of the event on a PCI proc init function, start and exit. And the uh, uh, trace on function at start, uh, action uh, actually to start, and uh, trace off action at exit. And also, uh, we stop the tracing uh, by default. You can see that uh, the first line <coughs> says that uh, uh, the tracing on call zero. Uh, this means that the disable tracing by default. <coughs> so this means, uh, in, in total, uh, we start the call graph uh, tracer at the start of the PCA proc init function and stop it at the end of the PCA proc init. Nasrani, so, uh, yep. uh, there is a question in the question oh, okay. box. Would you like to answer that now? Okay. Um, so how much overhead is there uh, with a bare uh, minimum trace uh, with this trace? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Actually, this depends on the, uh, how much uh, trace function you are was enabled. Uh, for example, uh, the function call graph tracer will uh, get the more uh, say, uh, overhead. And if you uh, enable that, uh, uh, several different tracers, it will uh, make more uh, overhead. Yeah, um, something like uh, uh, without actually that are uh, in uh, uh, my uh, QMU case, I saw that uh, if we I, I just uh, enable that some uh, events, it will just uh, I, I think that it's just a uh, well, less than a ten percent or something like that. But uh, if you enable that uh, function call graph tracer, you. <laughs> Uh, take a, uh, uh, yeah, I think that uh, more than five times uh, slower than the uh, normal case. So it's uh, totally depends on uh, what tracer you enabled. Okay, and uh, another question uh, from Leo uh, Was there uh, configurations uh, for F trace and K probes? Uh, it's a from boot uh, boot config. Be still enabled after the kernel boot uh, kernel booting? Yes, uh, that's a good question. Yes, uh, the the setting will be uh, uh, continued to the uh, the we'll say uh, after the uh, kernel boot. 
uh, because the, the, we cannot uh, decide when uh, we will let's say uh, clear that uh, we we can clear that the uh, settings. So uh, the, uh, currently, it will uh, continue to set the, the same uh, or say the, the configuration after booting. So you need to uh, clear that or something like that. So I recommend you to uh, let's say uh, set up the, the summer uh, event which uh, have a uh, was a trace of action. Then uh, uh, all the uh, the traces will stop at that point. And also uh, another question is uh, after the kernel booting, uh, how it handles the multiple instance? Um, oh. Uh, yeah, it actually that uh, you can uh, uh, say you can usually use that uh, the uh, multiple instance after kernel boot. So uh, if you uh, yeah, after the the kernel boot, uh, you can get the the traced data from the uh, each instance, and uh, if you don't need uh, any more, you can delete that uh, instance. Yeah. Uh, okay, there are another one needs uh, from uh, Mikhail. Um, do we have a similar functionality for K pro uh, K exec case? Uh, sorry, I don't know about the, the K exec uh, cases. Um, maybe we can. Uh, I think that our, uh, if the uh, K exec has a uh, what's a um, Init uh, can handle that the init the image. I think we, it's okay. Yeah. But not sure. I, I didn't uh, test it yet. So um, I will uh, try to uh, yeah, test it. Yeah, thank you for the question. Okay, uh, so the, the next one, um, here is the, the uh, what's it, uh, okay, uh, it's uh, the, uh, the result of the, the partial uh, function call graph. <laughs> um, here is a result of the uh, function, so that are, uh, you can see that are, uh, the trace start from the uh, uh, PCI proc init and stop at the exit. And uh, here is uh, the more complex uh, example of the histogram. Yeah, actually that our event histogram uh, can make a histogram uh, of the uh, event parameters usually. But uh, if you use it with the synthetic event, uh, you can expand it to the uh, histogram of the uh, like uh, elapsed time between uh, several events. Uh, here is an example of the such histogram. Uh, it uh, measure that the elapsed time uh, of the each init call functions, uh, and uh, make a histogram on the init call latency event, uh, the new synthetic event. So you can see uh, that the uh, the init call start actions will uh, set that the TS zero uh, with uh, the timestamp. And uh, in a finish uh, event, uh, there you can see that the, the, uh, it will make a latency the lat uh, variable uh, by using the the, 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 the elapsed time from the uh, TS zero to the, the current common time stamp. And uh, if the the match the, to the uh, start event, it will call that uh, uh, it call latency uh, new event with the uh, uh, function name and uh, uh, latency. And uh, uh, it call latency make a histogram of the the uh, given function name and uh, uh, the the latencies. 
So here is the, uh, here is the uh, result of the histogram. So you can see that the, the function name and elapsed time, and, uh, those are the sorted by the, the uh, elapsed time. So you can find that uh, what kind, uh, what uh, init call function uh, takes uh, how long a uh, time to do that. Yeah, in this case, that are uh, the late six select algorithm will be uh, uh, take a long time. Uh, this uh, this is because, this is because that are the this uh, inico will uh, run a uh, say a benchmark uh, function. Okay, uh, let me explain the uh, the uh, options uh, which you can uh, use in the uh, boot config uh, for the boot time tracing. So here is the uh, other options which uh, start from the kernel. Uh, these are the some options uh, borrowed from the the kernel command line. So I call it uh, global options. So you can use that TP print K and other options. Yeah, uh, one question coming from uh, Sarang. Uh, is this uh, init, uh, initial function tracing uh, same as the uh, init call debug? Uh, yes, um, yeah, good question. Yeah, actually that are, this one is uh, almost same as the uh, init call debug. But uh, uh, you don't need to uh, uh, enable that or the init call debug uh, with this uh, feature. And uh, also, uh, we can uh, filter it uh, on the online, actually, uh, with the uh, 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 boot time tracing. So boot time tracing is including that, uh, so, such kind of uh, features. Thank you. Okay, and here is the uh, instance options. Uh, the, those are the started from the F trace. Uh, so that uh, those options are setting that the instance rated parameters. If you specify any instance name, the instance is created automatically. Yeah. So that are if you uh, set that uh, the tracing on flag on the uh, instance foo. Uh, it will create the full instance and tracing all. Yeah, so that uh, you can uh, set up that are uh, some options, tracing on, trace crop, and buffer size. And there are more instance options, um, like a Arc snapshot or uh, CPU masks, uh, event tracers, uh, F trace trace filters, F trace no traces, or something like that. Uh, uh, most of the options are similar to the options in the kernel command line, but extended to support multiple instances. And here are the, the per event options. Since their event is disabled by default, you need to specify uh, the enable without any values. Uh, so uh, also you can uh, configure the uh, filters and actions as you saw in the uh, examples. And also uh, there are uh, K-probes events and sensitive events. So uh, uh, please uh, focus on our other group name. So if you uh, put the group name, uh, 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 sorry, if you put the uh, k probes as a group name, it, the event uh, will be the, the k probes event. And uh, uh, if you put the uh, synthetic uh, as a group name, uh, this one will be your uh, synthetic event. So, uh, <clears throat> So that are the K-probes is a kind of the uh, dynamic event and a, a kind of a break point. And the sensitive event is a kind of a stub event, uh, which is used for storing uh, the histograms usually. 
Okay, uh, anyway, um, uh, this is a summary of the boot time trace uh, options. Uh, most of the F trace started options are actually that are corresponding to the trace FS interface. Uh, of course, some sub kits uh, changes the uh, uh, were uh, changed uh, for the simplifying the name. Uh, for example, uh, f trace uh, dot instance dot uh, dot uh, options. This will uh, set the, the the value to the uh, trace fs slash uh, instances slash who slash uh, trace options. And uh, some other options which uh, which that uh, trace fs does not expose use the kernel command line uh, option with the kernel keys. So for example, uh, you can set that the TP print K or uh, dump on oops. Uh, those are not exposed by your trace FS. So I will uh, use that, uh, reuse the actually that, uh, the kernel command line option. So that's uh, uh, the syntax for the uh, boot time tracing. Would you have any questions about boot time tracing? So Masami, I have yeah. one question. Um, yep. If you were to recommend, um, this is a superset of init called debug also, right? Because it includes init called debug. So when would we, when would you recommend using boot time uh, tracing versus uh, init called debug? Do you have recommendation? Obviously, if you see early boot problems, you want to use boot time, but I just wanted to see where, what kind of uh, debugging or tracing uh, you would be appropriate in situations. Which one would be better? Uh, yeah, uh, that's a good question. I think that uh, if you have uh, some uh, uh, suspicious uh, functions uh, for, the, uh, yeah, for the debugging target, uh, you can use that uh, the, what's it, uh, the the second example uh, technique. So you can uh, uh, start with the, uh, the function call graph, um, the partial function call graph on the function, and uh, uh, understand what the uh, the what's it, uh, the what's it, uh, the function execution pass. It's done in uh, uh, in that uh, function, and uh, uh, yeah, you can uh, uh, put that uh, some uh, K props events on that, and uh, uh, get that some uh, uh, say, uh, uh, some uh, local variables values uh, how it changed or something like that. But uh, uh, if you fo just focus on our init call. Um, Let's say her uh, debug. Uh, of course, you can use that uh, the init call debug option. Yeah, but uh, uh, actually, that uh, if you uh, let's say wanna filter out and focus on uh, some uh, the result, um, you can. In that case, you can use that uh, the, this uh, boot time tracing uh, because it's it can harbor uh, the filters. So uh, filter out there are uh, some latencies or something like that. Is that good for you? Sure. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay, the, the next question is Sang. Uh, uh, Sang, uh, um, uh, which uh, is there, uh, we don't use init to MFS. Uh, is there any, uh, other way to use that the root config? Uh, actually, that's a good question. Um, yeah, uh, currently we don't have uh, uh, any way, uh, other way to use that the root config without uh, in So uh, uh, sorry, you sorry, you need to use that uh, in uh, for using that the root uh, root config. Um, yeah. I'm uh, I, I'm planning to <laughs> to add some more uh, that's a was a feature to add a boot config um, 
let's say, uh, append the root config to the, the kernel image. Uh, but it's not, uh, let's say, yet finished. So uh, if you are uh, interested in, uh, please help me to uh, do that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, the, these are the, the additional uh, questions. Uh, let's informations. Oh. Um, oh. Another question is coming, and uh, the cows uh, question. Uh, why are you uh, tried, uh, tied? Tied. Let's say tied to initram FS. Yeah. Actually, that are, uh, there is no. Let's say. Uh, no good space for the um, initram uh, other than uh, initram FS. Um, actually, at first, uh, <clears throat> I tried to uh, use that uh, load the uh, uh, boot config uh, without initram FS, but uh, uh, in that case, I need to uh, let's say uh, other let's say uh, change the uh, bootloader. Uh, like a, uh, changing that the grab or something like that, and uh, also the the kernel need to be changed to uh, or say identify that the, uh, the the boot config uh, earlier. So uh, it depends on the, uh, the except or say outside of the kernel. So at this point, I'm using that the, the init run fs. Because in terms of FS handling is, uh, yeah, you know, all the uh, all the code is in the kernel. So I'm um, decided to use that. Okay, another question uh, from the. Um, from the Eduardo, uh, Eduardo. Um, this new kernel boot config type with uh, these tracing options is ideal for uh, monitoring uh, microservices at startup, or um, maybe more focused on our, uh, monitoring systems security at boot. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, you, I'm, as I said that uh, in uh, the first uh, of the of this session, uh, I think that uh, the boot time uh, tracing is um, yeah. If you are think, you know, um, there are many uh, ways to use that. Uh, the, 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 sorry, uh, there are many reasons to use that. So uh, I don't think I can, uh, uh, or say, focus on that. Uh, the, those are the usages. Yeah, if you uh, you know uh, want to use that for the system security, yeah, you can use that. And uh, you can of course uh, expand uh, the boot config to support that, like uh, uh, making a, a secure uh, secure security. <laughs> Uh, let's say top level keys, and uh, you can add some more uh, uh, options for that. Is that a question? Okay, the next one is uh, where I'm, uh, coming from. Where I'm, uh, in the case of boot failure. Uh, Will the crash file of the, the kernel be stored in the kernel uh, dump on uh, variable? Ah, the kernel sorting. Ah, you mean that the the, the boot on hmm? kernel dump on variables? Uh, no, I'm not so sure about that. Sorry, I think that if you are usually use a, a K dump or something like that, uh, you can uh, get the uh, some uh, let's say a boot uh, 
uh, sorry, uh, boot time tracing, um, uh, let's say uh, trace buffer in the, uh, the dumped file. Yeah, I I saw some uh, script to get the, the uh, F trace, um, the, let's say F trace, uh, trace buffer uh, retrieving uh, from the, the crushed, uh, let's say kernel image. So maybe you can use that. Okay, uh, so uh, this one is uh, additional information for the, uh, the root time tracing. So uh, for for the K-probes event, I think, uh, do you think that uh, you need some more assistance to, uh, to set it up? Uh, if so, uh, yes, uh, we have a, a path probe, uh, which is a, a part of the kernel path tool. It now supports that the root boot config format. So you can define that a new k probes event uh, by your source level information at below. Uh, so uh, this example actually that uh, put the uh, probes on the uh, 55th uh, line uh, of the C groups init uh, function with the SSID local variable. So as you can see that the uh, dash dash boot config and dash dash define Will, will show that uh, the definition of the uh, k probes events in a boot, uh, boot config format. So now you can, uh, yeah, uh, easily to get that uh, the uh, k probes um, definition. And uh, uh, Okay, our uh, next slide is there. Uh, so, uh, and also, uh, if you feel that it's not easy to write down the uh, boot config, uh, there are two scripts to help you to make it. Yeah, uh, one is our F trace to bconf. Uh, this is a convert the uh, current F trace settings into a boot config file. So that uh, if you uh, set up the, the F trace, uh, the trace FS, then uh, run a f trace to bconf uh, script, you can get the uh, boot config file. And uh, also there is a bconf to f trace sh, uh, it's vice versa. Uh, it's, uh, also it read the given boot config file and uh, uh, make a share script, uh, say, make a share script uh, to set up that uh, f trace. If you pass that uh, apply, option which tries to apply that those uh, uh those commands to uh, to f trace or check and uh, here is an another information uh i would like to uh, touch that uh, the start timing of the uh the boot time tracing yeah, actually, that uh, since our boot time tracing uh, depends on the, the basic tracers and uh, also some uh, trace events or k probes event. So uh, we need to wait for uh, those initialization. So the, the boot time tracing is actually uh, started uh, with uh, uh, started at the, the, the last of the uh, core init call. Uh, anyway, uh, most of the kernel initialization uh, has been done after the core init call. The core init call usually uh, used for the uh, initializing that the core functionality, very core functionality. So that are, uh, for example, the, the subsystems, uh, file systems, or device, uh, device drivers uh, will be uh, uh, initialized after that. So those are the, the traceable. And the, here is the uh, initial, uh, say initialization order, uh, uh, sorry, internal initialization order of the, the boot time tracing. So uh, I'll say, uh, note that the, the boot time tracing is initialized in this order. So uh, not what you write. So uh, for example, uh, even if you are uh, enable the uh, what's the event 
um, at first, if you are you are a boot config, right? That uh, the the uh, event enable at first and uh, uh, settings buffer size, uh, it will be your uh, what's it? Uh, the event uh, was uh, uh, sorry. Um, the the buffer size is set at first, and uh, afterwards the the event is enabled always. So here is the uh, summary of the, the usage of the uh, boot time tracing. Uh, with the uh, following steps, you can run the uh, boot time tracing on your kernel. So at first, uh, build and install your kernel with the config boot config and config boot time tracing. And uh, uh, build the uh, tools uh, boot config boot config. Actually, that you can run a make tools boot config uh, will make a, a boot config command, and uh, set up that uh, f trace as you like, and uh, uh, generate a, a boot config file uh, using that uh, the, this uh, f trace to bconf shell script. Yeah, here, and uh, applying the uh, config file to the init of the image as follows, uh, uh, boot config, um, hyphen a and uh, config file and uh, init rd. And the reboot machine with uh, boot config uh, option uh, on the kernel command line. Then you can get the, uh, the root time tracing is working on your kernel. Okay, uh, that's all. Uh, all of the uh, my talk I have today. Uh, would you have any uh, additional questions? Yeah, you can uh, use your uh, voice or uh, question and Q and A box, both. Okay. Okay. If... <laughs> That's yeah. great, Masami. Thank you so much. Um, just want to do one last call for questions. Yep. If anyone has a question for Masami, please go ahead and type it in the Q and A box or the chat, or feel free to unmute yourself and and use your voice. Hmm. Okay. Um, Shua, do you want to talk through the, the different resources available? Of course. Okay. Great. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much for, for joining uh, this session. Yes, thank you. Masami, oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, Shua will just give a quick run. Oh. Oh, we have a question. Have a few. <laughs> okay, yeah, Don't go anywhere. Uh, <laughs> yeah. There you go. Okay. The the I think that uh, the last question will, uh, yeah. If you, uh, if any time if this error happened, uh, then uh, we will uh, not able to run this. Uh, is right. Uh, you mean that uh, if the initram FS uh, has a uh, summer, uh, what's it, the format errors or something like that? Uh, in that, even in that case, actually, that the, uh, the boot config uh, can work uh, because that uh, we will uh, get the boot config before uh, what's it passing or uh, what's it uh, uh, decoding that the initram FS image. Uh, so that are uh, if even if the the init um, fs is broken, uh, the boot con uh, unless that uh, the boot config is uh, broken, um, yeah, uh, the boot config and the boot time tracing is work uh, can can work. Okay. And uh, uh, please, how do I 
get the more resources to help me because I'm a junior in the world, uh, the field. Yeah, uh, okay. I, I actually that are in this slide I are showed that the summer uh, the let's say documentations over the year actually that the uh, documentations uh, are in uh, uh, the kernel source code uh, sorry uh, kernel documentations uh, there is some uh, documentations about the boot config uh, in the, uh, the documentations under the uh, uh, admin guide and uh, also uh, the uh, boot time for the boot time tracing you can find that uh, the documentation and um, uh, was it find it under the documentations uh, slash uh, tracing slash that uh, boot time tracing uh, the, uh, dot rsd so you can find that those are uh, what's it are the resources under the uh, the kernel uh, source code Oh, sure. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, what they are shared uh, the it in their uh, chat. Yes, I put put the link uh, to boot time trace in the chat for you to see everybody. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, is there one more question there, Masami? Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> there might be one more for you. <laughs> yeah. Is it at the bottom there? Uh, is device three or ACPI valid uh, alternatives to the init RAM FS that you would consider? Yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, at first I tried to uh, change the device tree uh, to support the, the boot time tracing, but uh, uh, it was re rejected uh, because that the boot uh, device tree is only for the hardware and uh, not for the software, so we cannot use that. And the ACPI, ACPI is actually uh, let's say made by your uh, the hardware vendor, so uh, I cannot use that. So. So that are the that is why I uh, introduced uh, the uh, extra uh, boot configuration file. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Masami. Um, sure. Also, yes, uh, Masami. Actually, the reason you would want to not tie to ACPI or boot would be that it would be um, firmware agnostic. Would that be correct assessment? Sorry, I cannot hear you. It doesn't depend on the firmware if we were to uh, not to tie it to device tree or ACPI. Ah, uh, the firmware? I was wondering if that's another reason uh, to not have a tie with the firmware. Yes, uh, that's right. So that are yeah, currently uh, some platforms still use that, uh, the device tree in the, uh, from the file, but uh, uh, Recently, more modern uh, platform uh, passed that, uh, the device tree from the firmware. So we cannot change it. Yeah, correct. There seems to be another question for you, Masami. Oh, yeah, okay. We um, have time, so don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> uh, the, okay, the, the question is, uh, are those uh, tracing option uh, uh, slated to go uh, permanently in uh, uh, the, some new kernel version. Uh, very, uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> Actually, I hope so. Um, I will uh, expanding uh, the, uh, what's it, the, the options. Uh, because that uh, F trace uh, introducing that are new uh, features, um, so that uh, it actually that are uh, depends on the uh, trace FS uh, APIs. So unless the uh, trace FS uh, does not change, uh, this uh, uh, these are parameters uh, will not change in a new uh, kernel version. Thank you. Okay.
Oh. Okay, uh, sure. Uh, would you or try to, uh, let's say, uh, explain that the, the, this uh, material? Yeah, go yes. right ahead, Shua. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Masami, uh, for doing this. Um, thank you to everybody for attending, joining us, and asking great questions. Um, we hope it will be helpful in your journey to learning more about effective and productive participation in the open source projects. This is why we do this. We offer this as a self-study uh, for not uh, only new developers, but also people wanting to know a different area in the kernel. Um, or about open source. We have various, uh, we have webinars ranging from open source to software engineering and kernel specific. And uh, we also leave you with the other resources, uh, the next one, foundation mentorship program and outreach inter internships and training opportunities on this slide. These are all links you can go and learn more about them. And we also have Linux Foundation events um, to attend uh, a range of, uh, we have educational content that you can learn from attending these events. And thanks again for joining us today. Yep. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, thank you, Masami, that was wonderful. And hope everyone has a great day. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for uh, joining us. And uh, I hope you have a great day and great boot time dressing. Thank you. Thank you, Masami. Thank you. Thank you.